Hi, welcome to Storytime with Gigi. Today we're reading a book called A Baby Sister for Francis by Russell Hoban. Pictures by Lillian Hoban. This is a very cute story. It was a quiet evening. Father was reading his newspaper. Mother was feeding Gloria, the new baby. Frances was sitting under the kitchen sink. She was singing a little song. Plinkety, 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 plink. Here's the dish rags that's under the sink. Here are the buckets and brushes and me. Plinkety, 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 plee. She stopped the song and listened. Nobody said anything. Frances went to her room and took some gravel out of the drawer where she had been saving it. She put the gravel into an empty coffee can and put the lid back on the can. Frances marched into the living room and rattled the gravel in the can. As she marched, she sang a marching song. Here we go, marching, rattly bang. Please don't do that, Frances, said Father. Frances stopped. All right, she said. She went back to the kitchen and sat down under the sink. Mother came in, carrying Gloria. Why are you sitting under the sink, said Mother. I like it here, said Francis. It's cozy. Would you like to help me put Gloria to bed, said Mother. How much allowance does Gloria get, said Francis. She's too little to have an allowance, said Father. Only big girls like you get allowances. Isn't it nice to be a big sister? May I have a penny along with my nickel now that I'm a big sister, said Francis. Yes, said Father. Now your allowance will be six cents a week because you are a big sister. Thank you, said Francis. I know a girl who gets seven cents a week. She gets three nickels and two pennies. Well, said Father, it's time for bed now. Father picked Frances up from under the sink and gave her a piggyback ride to bed. Mother and father tucked her in and kissed her good night. I need my tiny special blanket, said Frances. Mother gave her the tiny special blanket. And I need my tricycle and my sled and both teddy bears. And my alligator doll, said Frances. Father brought in the tricycle and the sled and both teddy bears and the alligator doll. Mother and father kissed her goodnight again and Francis went to sleep. In the morning, Francis got up and washed and began to dress for school. Is my blue dress ready for me to wear, said Francis. Oh, dear, said Mother. I was so busy with Gloria that I did not have time to iron it, so you'll have to wear the yellow one. Mother buttoned Frances up the back. Then she brushed her hair and put a new ribbon in it and put her breakfast on the table. Why did you put sliced bananas on the oatmeal, said Frances. Did you forget that I like raisins? No, I did not forget, said Mother, but you finished up the raisins yesterday and I have not been out shopping yet. Well, said Francis, things are not very good around here anymore. No clothes to wear, no raisins for the oatmeal. I think maybe I'll run away. Finish your breakfast, said Mother. It's almost time for the school bus. What time will dinner be tonight, said Francis. Half past six, said Mother. Then I will have plenty of time to run away after dinner, said Francis. And she kissed her mother goodbye and went to school. After dinner that evening, Frances packed her little knapsack very carefully. She put in her tiny special blanket and her alligator doll. She took all the nickels and pennies out of her bank for travel money, and she took her good luck coin for good luck. Then she took a box of prunes from the kitchen and five chocolate sandwich cookies. She's serious. 
Well, said Francis, it is time to say goodbye. I am on my way. Goodbye. Where are you running away to, said Father. I think that under the dining room table is the best place, said Francis. It's cozy. And the kitchen is near if I run out of cookies. That is a good place to run away to, said Mother. But I'll miss you. I'll miss you too, said Father. Well, said Francis, goodbye. And she ran away. Father sat down with his newspaper. Mother took up the sweater she was knitting. Father put down the newspaper. You know, he said, it is not the same house without Francis. That is exactly what I was thinking, said Mother. The place seems lonesome and empty without her. Francis sat under the dining room table and ate her prunes. Even Gloria, said Mother, as small as she is, can feel the difference. I can hear her crying a little right now, said Father. Well, said Mother, a girl looks up to her older sister. You know that. Father picked up his newspaper. Then he put it down again. I miss the songs that Francis used to sing, he said. I was so fond of those little songs, said Mother. Do you remember the one about the tomato? What does the tomato say early in the dawn, sang Mother? Time to be all red again now that night is gone, said sang Father. Yes, he said, that is a good one, but my favorite has always been when the wasps and the bumblebees have a party, nobody comes that, can, that can't that can buzz. Well, said Mother, we shall just have to get used to, to a quiet house now. Frances ate three of the sandwich cookies and put the other two aside for later. She began to sing, I am poor and hungry here eating prunes and rice. Living all alone is not really very nice. She had no rice, but chocolate sandwich cookies did not sound right for the song. I can almost hear her now, said Father, humming the tune that Frances had just sung. She has a charming voice. It is just not a family without Francis, said Mother. Babies are very nice. Goodness knows I like babies. But a baby is not a family. Isn't that a fact, said Father. A family is everybody all together. Remember, said Mother, how I used to say... Think how lucky the new baby will be to have a sister like Frances. I remember that very well, said Father, and I hope that Gloria turns out to be as clever and good as Frances. With a big sister like Frances to help her along, she ought to turn out just fine, said Mother. I'd like to hear from Frances, said Father, just to know how she is getting along in her new place. I'd like to hear from Frances, too, said Mother, and I'm not sure the sleeves are right on this sweater I'm knitting for her. Francis is thinking about. Hello, called Francis from the dining room. I'm calling on the telephone. Hello, hello. This is me. Is that you? Hello, said Mother. This is us. How are you? I am fine, said Francis. This is a nice place, but you miss your family when you're away. How are you? We are all well, said Father, but we miss you too. I will be home soon, said Frances, and she hung up the phone. <laughs> she hung up. This is so cute. She said that she will be home soon, said Father. That is good news indeed, said Mother. I think I'll bake a cake. Frances put up her nap, put on her knapsack and sang a little traveling song. Big sisters really have to stay at home, not travel far away, because everybody misses them and wants to hug and kisses them. I'm not sure about that last rhyme, said Frances, as she arrived in the living room and took off her knapsack. That's a good enough rhyme, said Father. I like it fine, said Mother, and they both hugged and kissed her.
What kind of cake are you baking? said Francis to Mother. Chocolate, said Mother. It's too bad that Gloria is too little to have some, said Francis. But when she's a big girl like me, she can have chocolate cake too. Oh, yes, said Mother. You may be sure that there will always be plenty of chocolate cake around here. And that's our story. I hope you liked it. Francis' stories were amongst my favorite when I was little. This is another book that I was able to check out from my local library. I really recommend you go and check out your library yourself and you'll find more stories just like this one. Well, make sure that you like and subscribe and share with your friends. Bye until next time.